Oh, Mr. Wesley, lend me a dinger. Ding, 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 ding. Make it the best pinger that you've ever... I don't know where I'm going with that one. Guys! Hey, cheers to everyone that came out last night to the Rankin Radio live podcast recording in the Brunswick and Herve. It was a lot of fun, you know, the wine flowed like water, and you, by the end you couldn't tell what was semen and what was lube. A uh, lot of fun, yeah, everyone got to gaze upon the scale A big Jim, appreciate him for all of his, his folds and his flaps uh, and his crust and his discharge, and just everything that makes him a man, you know, everything that makes him... The guy he is today, um, a lot of fun uh, had at the expense of Cy Twiddy. That was good. I think he enjoyed it. He had a lady friend with him that he's been wooing for just two weeks. And uh, she was put on the squat, put on the squat, put on the spot quite a lot uh, in a squat. We forced her to squat uh, over his face um, and lay a small tod just on the end of his nose. Um, for, for, for everyone else's amusement, they left in tears. But that's just, that's comedy. That's show business, baby. You don't always like it, but, you know, it's got to get done, and not it? People got to get got. Time's up, Twitty. <laughs> um, it was a lot of fun. Um, uh, the, the the recording of that will be up on the Rankin Radio Patreon uh, page uh, later today, which you can access for the paltry sum of $3.00. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's less 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 than a cup of uh, this Costa uh, flat white. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, a lot of fun. Um, shout out to your man who came down, uh, who showed me the picture of the lobster throwing a shoe that he's planning on getting tattooed soon uh, next to a tattoo he has of a hipster seagull, uh, which has got like a little hipster beanie hat on, and it's I think it says something like eat rubbish and shit on everybody. <laughs> it's coming out of the seagull's beak. <laughs> it's like, I got it before I heard you trashing seagulls. <laughs> God bless him. Um, God bless Whitehawk boy, aka Constrict, who came down and accidentally found himself uh, in a trance uh, mid midway through and then was put on the spot um, as to, I can't remember what, what was it about. Something about um, whether or not he would pay money for an electric bugger tub which was a contraption uh, whereby um, totally, definitely, 100% straight guys um, that definitely are, are straight, yeah. You know, do all sort of normal straight guy stuff, um, but would, would, you know, would be interested in the idea of, yeah, just getting buggered by something. <laughs> uh, there was also the Alan Sugar hat of casual racism um, that was um, an amazing invention whereby you put it on and then you can basically be casually racist and without consequence. Uh, it's it's a patented invention by Alan Sugar. Um, it allows you to basically make sort of casting aspersions or generalizations about nationalities or races, as long as you don't use any actual slurs or particular racial epitaphs. Um, epithets. Epitaphs? Epithets. Epithets. Yeah. Um, so that was a bit fun. So I totally wanted to have a go with that, of course. Um, yeah, good time had by all, guys. It was, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, there was, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway, listen back to it. You will, you will enjoy it. And guys, I'm good to the best, yeah, amazing news. The best news I've had in nine on eight fucking months. The app is finished. Can you believe you would ever hear those words come out of my mute? Uh, it's being submitted to the app store and to Google play. Uh, today, uh, which I imagine means it will be up on Android, uh, fingers crossed, um, later today. It's stuff, I mean, the Google Play Store, they're slags. They are sluts. They will open their legs for any app, no matter how chonky <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and full of malware. They would just bring it in. Come on, back it in. Yeah, just careful you don't get app aids when you put it in and take it out again. Just whip it in, whip it out, wipe it. Know what I mean? All right. Thanks, Google Play. Uh, App Store, Apple App Store, on the other hand, is a bit more um, a bit more frigid, should we say, in terms of app stores. And that's a good way to describe the Apple App Store. Frigid. It let you in. Yeah, but you've got to play the game, haven't you? You've got, uh, you've got to take them out, treat them real nice, buy them shit. You know, not shag any of their mates first. 
you got to, you know, tell them, tell them they look nice, you know, comment their hair, read them some Bukowski, tell them you're a feminist, all of that. You've got to play the game, yeah? But then, oh, the sweet, sweet treats that lay within. Oh, worth it. Worth every every penny of your pay packet that you spend on it. That's why it costs 100 quid to put an app in the App Store. Free Google Play. There you go. You know, what, what do you say? If, <laughs> if, if, a, if a daddy's rich, take her out for a meal. If a daddy's poor, just do what you feel. Mungo Jerry said it better than anyone else ever could. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Memes. Steady job, a couple extra potatoes, that's all I want. You're getting on, you're pushing 30, Sluggy. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Well, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy, and that's funny, and it's, it's, it's kind of cool, and it's interesting, and it's edgy, and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you, and if you don't play that out, you actually fail. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Memes on Threshold.fm, and welcome to about another 55 minutes of my fat bearded face. Um, five to one, one to five odds, uh, five to one odds uh, on ranking being hungover. That's a fair, what's that? A, no, it would be one to five, I would have said, um, meaning that, you know, you put a fiver on, you get a quid back. Um, I'm actually not hungover, which is a, it, which is very surprising. And we'll say, and I will tell you, it is entirely uh, due to Jim uh, doing sober October, um, which meant that basically he's quite keen to go at the end, which was fine because he was driving, and I'd, I'd you know better to get a lift with him than pay for a taxi because I'm cheap. Um, so yeah, I mean, he probably saved me 30, 40 quids worth of booze in the process as well. So if anything, he's making me money. Um, which is great, makes a change. Uh, so that's good. Yeah, so, you know, wake up feeling fine. Today I think I only had four beers. It's a cool story, isn't it, guys? That's a, that, that is a cool story brought to you by Threshold.fm. Cool story, bro. It's appalling. Yeah, thanks. Um, it's some interesting uh, developments. Um, not developments uh, stuff. Yeah, could be still drunk, actually. That's that's possible. Um, is uh, Ro- Robin's put me onto this thing uh, that is called... Uh, <laughs> Um, it's called Talk to Transformer. Uh, see how a modern neural network completes your text. Type a custom snippet or try one of the examples. Um, and so effectively, what this is, this is a piece of AI, a very narrow band AI, uh, sort of machine learning type thing known as a neural network, whereby you give it a line of text and it then extrapolates on that text for about three paragraphs. You can put anything out, anything you want into it, ask it questions, whatever, and it just sort of meanders off discussing what you've put into it with quite often hilarious uh, consequences. Um, so let's get uh, the boy up here. Um, I mean, this this is, has actually potential to just be fucking rubbish if it decides to... Um, not go on. Um, so let's just put in lobster death cult. See what it says. Um, maybe I need to refresh that actually. Uh, lobster death cult. Sure. Go on, buddy. Don't fuck me about. Yeah. Adam King, um, built by Adam King. What? What? All right, it's chatting mad shit. This is this is not what it's supposed to do. Tip classic, absolute classic. It's just firing Daily Beast articles at me. Santa Claus death cult will kill fifty million U.S. citizens before death. Death's cure. What the fuck? Okay, all right, uh, that's piqued my interest. Um, let's see what's going on there, shall we? Daily Beast. Santa Claus death cult? Guys, this is from... Oh, fuck's sake. Okay, all right, we're Googling it, are we? Santa Claus uh, death cult. Come on, guys. Let's get the show on the road. Um, I know my gender. I am Santa Claus. Minion death cult. What the fuck is going on? 
uh, the death of Santa Claus. The, it maybe it just made this up. Maybe it's just firing at random Daily Beast articles at me. Um, get your act together. Fucking neural networks. Fucking AI. They're never going to take over the world. Get your act together. And when you do, you will be a force to be reckoned with. When the fight's over, and that's the case when you leave. When it comes down to it, your choice is whether you be a fighter or a coward. I just want to be free. And you shouldn't have the right to take. And you can go to hell on earth forevermore. We will beat the devil. When it comes down to it, your choice is whether you stand for nothing or you fight for everything. Wow. I just want to be free, and you shouldn't have this written as sort of a poem, or is this, uh, and you can go to hell on earth forevermore, we will beat the devil, or is this a song? So just Sturge, man, this went much better yesterday, much, much better. Anyway, um, guys, let's, let's, we'll jog that on and get to much more important news. Uh, woman thinks Osama Bin Laden has been reincarnated as a seashell. I can't believe how badly that went. Um, this is great news, guys. A woman collecting seashells says she has found one that bears an uncanny resemblance uh, to the late terror leader Osama bin Laden. Uh, Deborah Oliver, 60, uh, was on Win uh, Win Winch Winch Winchley Winchelsea Beach, East Sussex, with husband Martin, 62, to celebrate their 42nd wedding anniversary. After discussing finding the shell, that's not bad, actually. I will say that is probably what he looks like now. Um, Deborah from Brentford, West London, also pointed out the irony of the situation. She said, funny that, he was buried at sea too. That is funny. That's good. I, I see that. Um, after discovering the shell on the floor, she said he fell about laughing and have to, had, had to, and have kept it as a little memento. Nice little memento of Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> That's nice. Have a little, little trinket just to remember him by. She said, it's not that often you find a seashell that looks like anyone at all. So finding a song of Bin Laden was amazing. Look at them. They're absolutely made up. Wow, she's got a five head and a half, hasn't she? That is not the haircut for someone with a five head. Pfft, rough. Look, he's really good. Look at the size of his hands. Jesus, look at those bear paws. You've really got gripped by the wrist as well. Look, show them. Show them what you found. Don't fucking say anything. Speak when you're spoken to. Show him. Show him the sh show, show him the seashell. Uh, we'd all gone for a walk on the beach. We just covered in millions and millions of shells and pebbles. That is not bad. That 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 is good. I, I'm impressed with that. Maybe it, it, I mean that's. Hey, listen. He was a very bad man. He was a bad bad boy. Yeah. Bad 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 boy. So if reincarnation is real, why not reincarnate him as a seashell? Oh, come on, really? Don't bother me. Um. I was drawn to the curious looking shell and went to pick it up when I looked at it properly closely. I thought it would look like Jesus. And then I saw the turban on top and I realised staring back at me and my palm was Osama Bin Laden. Wow. Incredible. No, go away. Stop it. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. Robin, why the fuck is the AI not being funny now? Hey, eh? come on. Okay, well, let's... Um, uh, is Os Osama Bin Laden. 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 Osama bin. Oh, this is good Good radio, isn't it? Just me trying to spell Osama bin. Oh, Laden. Laden. Uh, Dad. Come on. Come on, guys. Okay, guys. Uh, the US ambassador told reporters on Monday afternoon that the US and the UK had already established a relationship and that the two countries are ready to engage on a range of issues. Right. There's nothing to do with Osama Bin Laden in this. It's absolute. It's drunk. It's clearly drunk, isn't it? Let's capitalise the uh, things. Maybe uh, maybe that'll help. Come on, man. The following were the results of the Pew Research Survey on Osama Bin Laden. Uh, in general, do you generally approve or disapprove of America's involvement in Iraq? Man, this is, uh, this is a waste of everybody's time. Guys, a waste of everyone's goddamn time. Um... Cool, man who prefers the 1800s only wears historical clothes. Uh, it's lovely stuff. Right, look, let's get some shoe throwers on the road. Christ. Uh, new, fade, new fade black bit. It's called Slugger. A hey, Slugger. Maybe I am slightly hungover.
is corrupt. And we're all so many drunks with the radio on and the curtain is drawn. We're trapped in the belly of this horrible machine. And the machine is bleeding to death. Hey Black, it's called Slugger. Yeah, yeah. Faye Black, of course. One off of Gold Top Radio on Threshold.fm every Wednesday night at 8. Ah! Guys, okay, I've got a good one for you. The AI has finally come up trumps. Is Foghorn DB racist? Uh, is Foghorn DB racist? It will be assumed that Foghorn is not racist. In fact, he's a very nice fellow who is very passionate in his beliefs. It takes a lot to make a white nationalist think that he is racist. I myself believe that people of colour do not have a right to complain about the behaviour of white individuals. But, oh my God. Uh, that is why, if it's someone like Foghorn DMB who wants to take back the title of racism, uh, then we should be very careful about we, what we attribute to him and whether or not he's actually racist. But as far as I'm concerned, what does not make him racist is the fact that he actually supports the idea of white genocide. (laughs) 
Foghorn DMB was asked the question, is it racism to kill all the white people? And replied that it is an individual choice. <laughs> there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Foghorn DMB is in favour of white genocide. <laughs> Uh, what makes different choices? But I personally would not take that one over a little bit of Jewish life. I wouldn't take that over a little bit of Arab life. I, he takes the Jewish life. He takes the Arab life. He takes the songs that remind him of the good times. <laughs> ta- wow. Okay. Yeah, that's a bit more like it. Thanks, AI Neural Network. Um, Foghorn DMB in favour of white genocide. Uh, there you have it, ladies. Oh no, I didn't even have it up on the screen. You might think that I uh, I was doing a lie, that I was doing doing a shenanigans. Oh, here it is, guys. Um, <laughs> it is assumed that he's not racist, but he is in favour of white genocide. Okay, uh, it's assumed that Foghorn is not racist. He is, in fact, a very nice fellow who is very passionate about his beliefs, um, but he doesn't think that people of colour. I should have a right to complain about the behaviour. He sounds very confused. Very, very confused indeed. Um, Yeah, okay. Um. (laughs) Um, uh, Okay, all right. Let's let's give it another... Let's... uh, Are Tide Pods uh, sexist? Da-da-da. A spokesperson for Apple's iPhone and iPad pad said, we don't have a policy on gender, adding that we are unlikely to ever ban an app that's intended to help people talk about gender and help them feel more comfortable. Okay, where are the Tide Pods come into this? Um, the stance might be a little easier to follow in the UK, while the official Apple policy is that apps with a funny message... Uh, must have some sort of warning or explanation. The UK Government's Equality and Human Rights Commission states that companies must offer a clear, unambiguous message that there is no excuse, excuse or justification to discriminate against customers on the grounds of sex or gender. So to get around this, an app might have to either explain and explain why a certain feature is on and be consistent with other apps or just come up with a funny but offensive joke uh, that will still be taken seriously. First solution is easy, but the second requires a lot of work. Okay, a um, little more, more confusing there. Um, okay, our tide pods sexy. Okay, we're, we're in deep waters now, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just got some JD Salinger quotes. Okay, it's not just JD Salinger quotes. Catch her in the rye. Um, yeah. Okay, see, we've run out of funny on that one again, quite quickly. Um, fine. Um, that's not no interested in him really. Um, police kettling um, an octopus. Police kettle giant pink octopus and march it to Trafalgar Square. An octopus felt the long arm of the law. Nice. Uh, when it was kettled and marched to Trafalgar Square. Uh, in one of the most unlikely scenes of the Extinction Rebellion protests so far, the eight-legged sculpture was surrounded and forced through central London. Pepper, pepper spray it. Pepper spray the octopus in its big blue eyes. Come on, get it. The protesters uh, each held up a leg with a pole, uh, while the central body was on wheels. Footage of the octopus, octopus being escorted through the streets have been widely shared, uh, with some saying that Octi uh, is the real uncooperative crustacean. Nice. Are octopuses crustaceans? I don't know. An octopus is actually, yeah, a cephalopod, um, but we won't let that ruin the pun. Um, people have had plenty to say about this aspect of policing, uh, of the policing occupation, mainly jokes. Okay. Uh, good. Well, I think they should black bag it. I think they should get that octopus off to fucking Gitmo and waterboard it. Can you waterboard an octopus? Probably not. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you could electrocute it, though, and you could uh, sleep deprive it. Um, you could keep it up for days on end by forcing it to listen to heavy metal and then the Barney... Uh, the Barney song, the Barney friendship song, that'd be nice. Um, you could you could break one leg at a time, just until it gave you the information. I don't know what information. It, I mean, you break enough of its legs, it'll tell you anything you want. Anything you anything you want to know. Yeah, black bag him, get him off to Gitmo. Never hear from him again. Okay, that's that. That's what I think I should have done with that octopus. Yeah, I can make an example of him. Um. Nike Jesus shoes filled with holy water sell out in minutes after they were released. Man, I want me a pair of these Jesus shoes. Damn. 
Wow, look at this absolute chonker. Uh, America's fattest bear. Jesus. Lord, she coming. Uh, a redesigned version of the Nike Air Max 97s, which feature holy water injected into the soles, sold out within minutes at three grand a pop. <whistles> the limited edition Jesus shoes uh, were launched by Brooklyn-based company um, MSCHF, who made them with 100% uh, frankincense wool and added a crucifix to the laces in keeping with the theme. Nice. Uh, the Jesus Creepers. According to Fox News, the train is sold out within minutes. But don't be too surprised, because there were less than 24 pairs made. Hey, 24 times 3 grand, not too shabby, is it? For just putting some goddamn holy water in an Air Max 97. The shoes creator explained that there was colouring added to the holy water, uh, which in turn enhanced the visibility of it through the clear part of the sole. Uh, it has been reported that the design is in no way affiliated uh, with Nike. Okay, so can they get done for that? Because it does have the Nike tick on it. Nike, Nike, whatever. On the side of the trainer is the wording MT1425, which is a reference to a passage from the Bible which describes Jesus walking on the water, doing a 360. And we can see that on the back of the uh, back of one shoe has the vertical lettering MSCHF, and on the other, the lettering INRI. Uh, which stems from the Latin phrase Jesus Nazareth Rex uh, Ludarum, meaning Jesus, King of Nazareth, King of the Jews. They killed him though, didn't they? It's naughty. Naughty Jews. Don't kill Jesus. Don't kill him again. If he comes back again, don't do it. Uh, head of Commerce, Daniel Greenberg, uh, told the New York Post, uh, we thought of the Arizona Iced Tea and Adidas collab. Uh, where well, they were selling shoes that advertise a beverage company that sells iced tea bag, oh, iced tea at bodegas. So we wanted to make a statement about how absurd collab culture has gotten. So what, you you collabed with our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ? Who blessed the water? Who's out there? Which capitalist fat cat priests are out there blessing water for three grand sneakers? Bit much, isn't it? What would the Lord, what would the Lord think of that, eh? What would what would Cockney Jesus think of that? Cockney Jesus would he, what, what would he have? I don't know Air Max nineties I guess, yeah. Well, not nice last last little set of old, old classic nineties, yeah. Just said that's fucking throw him in the front. They fucking waste time injecting it into so I'll just fucking chuck him in the front. I'll get my kid back ties, get the baby back ties. If that in get a bit of it on his head. Throw me fucking kicks in that, yeah. Throw me little kicks in the in in the fucking font, yeah. Be proper fucking holy, yeah. Ah, fuck a bear. Throw me a pair of Reebok classics in there. Get it done, yeah. Here's your fucking Jesus creepers after that, mate. Kill hell. Um, anything else? Uh, nobody ran to become the mayor of a town in New Hampshire. Um. This gentleman here. Um, he looks like the meme guy. What was he called? Nice guy Greg or nice guy Steve? It's just like a sort of guy who looks a bit like him. He's sucking on a reefer and just looks like a really nice dude. Um, a man changed his name to nobody and stood for office in town in a town in the United States. The computer programmer turned political activist legally changed his name a few months ago with the intention of becoming the mayor of Keene, New Hampshire. Speaking to the Associated Press, nobody said his aim was to reduce the amount of government interference in people's lives. Nice. A man I could get behind. Uh, he said, I made it, the name change, because I intended to run for office, and there's a lot of jobs in government that nobody should do. <laughs> I like his campaign posters. Nobody tells the truth. Nobody can fix the economy. Nobody cares about the poor. Electnobody.com. Paid for by nobody. <laughs> um, what I'd like to do in any political position is as little as possible. And by that, I mean shrink the government down as much as I can. Nice. Nobody, a non-partisan candidate, he, he's really he's my kind of guy, was standing against two city councillors in the preliminary election. Uh, the two who received the most votes will now go on ahead, uh, now go head to head, in the mayoral race, he was up against Republican George Hansel and Democrat Mitch Greenwald, who were both hoping to take over from the retiring incumbent Kendall W. Lane. And while he didn't quite make the cut, losing by more than a thousand votes to his opponents, nobody says he has a plan B to fall back on right away. 
Um, he's going to bomb the town hall. No, no. Uh, speaking ahead of the vote, he said, I think if I don't get mayor, I'm going to run for governor tomorrow. Nice. Uh, but the election wasn't the first time. Nobody has been, been involved in politics. In the past, he has been arrested by local police on 11 occasions during protests. He explained, there was one arrest in which the FBI, Joint Terrorism Task Force, and believe it or not, uh, came to arrest me for a pound of weed. Prior to the vote, nobody thought he stood a fair chance of making an impression and received some good feedback from the community. Speaking to the Boston, the Boston Globe, uh, the Michigan native said, I get a lot of good response. A lot of good response. The last time I went to the liquor store, there was a guy in there. He says, you're running for mayor. And I'm like, yeah, I am. And he's like, groovy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he didn't win. Unbelievable. With interactions with the public like that. Hey, you're running for mayor. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> groovy. Commenting on the bizarre story, fellow candidate Hansel said, uh, I would be keen. It wouldn't be keen without a quirky story. Oh, lovely stuff. Thanks for that one, Dominic Smithers. You sure have lightened my morning. Uh, Tunes-wise, should we have this Counter-Strike and Merican bit? Um, I've heard rumours that it's a bit naughty, a bit pokey. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I imagine it's liquid. Nice liquid, dubby liquid roller.
Yeah, man. Uh, Counter Strike and American. It's called Merc. Uh, that is a naughty bit of gear. Uh, you were correct in your assumption that that would be rascal and rowdy and things of like kind. And um, police officer taken off streets after filming with three scantily clad models. A Florida policeman has been taken off the streets and placed onto administrative leave after he appeared in an Instagram video in which he pretended to arrest three scantily clad women. Officer William Beaker was investigated by the Miami Beach Police Department Internal Affairs Unit on Monday after footage of the scripted Instagram video appeared online. Basically, Beaker can be seen in the video marching three women, one of whom is Playboy model uh, uh, Francia James towards the Miami Beach Police Station. He then lines the three models up with their backsides to the camera and can be seen in his full police officer uniform, giving all the women a once-over. All right, look at him, he's, you know, he's in traditional police garb there with the wraparound shades and everything. All the while, the women are wearing handcuffs and not a great deal else. Um, Tom, Tom Wood of the Lab Bible writing this one. James then shared the clip, which has been viewed more than 644,000 times uh, on her account alone with the caption, Do you like bad girls or good girls? Who's going to bail us out? In total, uh, after the other models also shared the clip, uh, it's been viewed more than 1.4 million times. There was a second video, too. Um, Tim just beating the shit out of them with a truncheon, and tasing them and pepper spraying them. Uh, in the follow-up, Officer Beaker can be seen sitting on his police all-terrain vehicle, surrounded by the models. The women then say to him, Thank you, Officer Bill, for letting us go. Officer Bill then responds, No problem. Enjoy the community. I like to protect and serve. And then he speeds off on his quad bike, trying to look as heroic as possible. Um, however, within a very short amount of time, his employers had seen the video and released a statement in which it was confirmed that the department was to look into the employee's actions. A police spokesperson said, On Monday, October 7th, the department was made a mayor, made a mayor, made aware of the video posted on social media. Chief Richard Clements immediately launched an internal affairs investigation and placed Officer William Beaker on an administrative uh in an administrative capacity, he's on fucking desk duty while the investigation takes its course. Officer Beaker's actions uh, have divided opinion since the videos were shared online. Um, I wonder whether or not anyone insinuates that perhaps he might like to be out there doing his fucking job. Uh, one Twitter user asked, are the police department scraping the bottom of the barrel when hiring officers? Is there a shortage of decent Americans willing to do the job of law enforcement? Uh, bring in some refugees and immigrants. They're decent and they'll gladly do the work. Uh, however, another person disagreed, offering, uh, out of all scandals these days, this is actually pretty light and almost a non-issue. Well, take a position, guys. If you ain't got a position, you've got fucking nothing in this world. Remember that. If you don't have an outrageously polarised political position, you are worthless. Just remember that. If you wake, if you wake up in the morning, yeah, and you what you what, and you just. Try and tackle just the everyday problems in front of you without taking a really extreme political position. Just remember that your life is meaningless, okay? Guys, you need to be communist or alt-right. Anything in the middle, forget about it. That's it. No, no more. No, no more. Hey, so this is um, pretty wild. Johnson & Johnson ordered to pay $8 billion to a man who developed breasts after taking drug. Eight, eight billion bucks. Growing a pair of titties ain't bad. I would say that is probably the. I would say that is probably the easiest way to make eight billion dollars. I'm gonna go. I mean, unless are there any lotteries? That I mean, look. If if it's an unintended, I mean, you know, there are people out there that that want that want to take drugs that will make them grow breasts. But let's say you don't. You know that. I mean, it's rough. Don't get me wrong. Eight billion though. That is a lot. A court has ordered Johnson & Johnson to hand over $8 billion to a man after an antipsychotic drug he was prescribed made him develop breasts. A judge in Philadelphia ruled that Nicholas Murray, 26, should be handed the eye-watering payout while thousands of other cases against the drug firm are pending in the state. Yes, there's a load of other people that it's happened to as well. Unsurprisingly, it wasn't just one person. Are they all going to get $8 billion? How many $8 billions are there to go round? I know Johnson & Johnson got a pound note about them, but it's a lot of $8 billions. Uh, lawyers arguing on behalf of Murray said uh, Jason, a Johnson & Johnson subsidiary 
had used a warning label that didn't adequately warn potential users about the risk of uh, gyne gynecomastia, the development of female breast tissue in young males. The lawyers said in court papers that the condition is severe, humiliating and often painful and causes severe psychological disturbances uh, during a critical period of formation in of self-image and general identity. I've every faith it does. Uh, they claimed that Johnson & Johnson uh, put profits over patients uh, and chose money uh, over children when they marketed the drug uh, Risperdal. In the statement they said the jury as have this jury, as have other juries in other litigation, once again imposed punitive damages on a corporation that valued profits over safety and profits over patience. Wow. I, I mean, eight, eight, eight billion. How, how much do we think Johnson & Johnson are worth? Johnson, Johnson, and Johnson worth. Well, we go and put a figure on it. 360 billion. Okay, so that's 8 billion is a pretty significant chunk of that. I mean, 8 billion is a pretty significant chunk of anything, really. I mean, even if it's an entire country. Um, okay, so, yeah. Not loads of 8 billion to go around. Maybe only 50. Maybe slightly less than 50. Um, so, uh, that could be the end of Johnson & Johnson, really, couldn't it? They balls that one up. Uh, and you could say they titted that one up, couldn't you? If you were the sort of person to make that sort of cheap gag, um, as of course I am. Um, what else we got? Student drains sugar daddy's credit card on thousand pound shopping spree. Good times. A student splashed out on a major shopping trip. Why is this news? A student splashed out on a major shopping trip after a sugar daddy told her to drain his credit card, buying all the girls in her group chat a new wardrobe. Uh, she's opted for stuff from Misguided, so they've headed straight for the basic bitch fast fashion. That's fine. Amy Williams of Glasgow uh, had an agreement with her loaded admirer, known as Richard, where she sends him photos of her feet in exchange for cash. Uh huh. Yep. Okay. Any any rich one? Any rich dudes or girls out there that are interested in a deal? like as like this one with me absolutely fine um also my girlfriend's feet are also up for grabs uh if you're interested just get in touch will at threshold.fm uh as many pictures of you as you want if you if you yeah if you can um, but the 21 year old decided to share the wealth in a recent exchange and treated her mates to a haul of trendy clothes from fast fashion giant misguided when the massive delivery arrived at her home, Amy's pal Sarah posted screenshots uh, from their order that showed various items of clothing, including a £55. But is this just an advert for Misguided now? Taking to Twitter, she shared a pic with the caption, Amy Sugar Dad just treated the whole girl's group chat to clothes. Ha ha. Amy's feet just like just weeping, like <laughs> they're just being abused. They're just being... <laughs> <they> <laughs> Uh, then, once the mountain of clothes had been delivered, Sarah posted another snap of it with the caption, It arrived. Um, after spotting the post, which received thousands of likes, fellow Twitter users flooded the comments to ask how they could get involved. One envious fashionista wrote, OK, how do I get in on the girls' chat? Where do I find the sugar daddy? Help, I need one. Uh, while others added, OK, well, I also want to be involved. Joking about the transaction, Amy replied, At least I was nice and gave him the £176 student discount. Well, that is nice of you. Uh, but it wasn't just jealous shoppers who saw the post. Misguided was alerted to the deal and launched a competition, giving other group chats the opportunity to win a dream wardrobe. The firm tweeted, Amy's sugar daddy works hard, but Misguided works harder. We're giving away one girl's group chat their entire wish list. Comment below why we should pick you and your squad. People are commenting below. Because we'll upgrade it to vagina pics. We'll do what we'll do what it takes. Let us know what you need. <laughs> Ready with camera phones now. <laughs> um, well, good times. Um, if you're a hot girl with feet pics to sell, I guess. <laughs> yeah, cool man. That's 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 cool stuff. Uh, right, let's have another little little bit. There are some other look. There's this um cove bit, yeah, which feels like a sort of um 
modern day oldie worldy logistics hospitally number um, souped up uh, for Gen Z's. Uh, yeah, it's nice. It's called Lorito. John B's in the chat. Get him, lads! Make sure everyone votes for John B's video, get stuffed in the Drum Base Arena Awards. I'd quite like to do a Scottish remix of it called Get It Fork! I can't believe they don't have a best radio station or best radio show category in the Drum and Bass Arena Awards. The fucking Drum and Bass Industrial Complex are scared of Threshold, they're scared of the LDC. Scared of the Lobos. They're shook. The whole DMB industrial complex is shook. Can't take the shoe throwers. We're tearing this bitch down from the inside. We're draining the swamp. Right, I think we need an alternative drum and bass awards. Categories like most egregious use of foghorn in the DB tune. Highest pitch snare drum. Worst jump up. <laughs> Best bit of drum and bass beef. Yeah, John B's going to perform it live. He's just going to turn up with a ghetto blaster and a cassette tape, put it in, press play, and dance on the spot. <laughs> just do the running, man. Five minutes while it plays. Yeah, everyone give him a round of applause. It's fine. It's live. It's live. Come on. It's live. We all just press play. Um, listen, what's going on, guys? I've completely forgotten. Well, I'm doing a radio show. Yeah, yeah. we should do an alternative drum and bass awards. We could have shoe throw of the year. We can fucking, yeah. Best DJ, worst DJ. Why do they never have worst in there? People need to know, right? Because people need to step their game up. If you got voted worst DJ of the year, whoo, dearie me. Unbelievable. Um, 
Yeah, worst drama. Yeah, you could have beef of the year. I think it's good. Biggest foghorn of the year. You know, most overcompressed mix down of the year. Um, <laughs> most most obvious use of sample pack. It could be some good categories. Come on, we'll we'll we'll, we'll brainstorm it in the Discord. I'll get it. I'll, I'll get like a uh, like a Survey Monkey form thing up on the Threshold website, and we can uh, we can have our own awards <laughs> award ceremony. Be good. Um, guys, right, what else have we got? Oh, God almighty, hello. Uh, two, right, good Florida man news. Two Florida men charged with trying to get an alligator drunk. Um, I'm going to win best radio show, I think, and probably best radio station in the threshold uh, drama based awards. So just let you know. Don't, don't even bother voting for anyone else because I'm rigging it. I am rigging it. Uh, two Florida men have been arrested after they allegedly captured an alligator uh, by the side of the road. Before holding it down and trying to get it drunk by pouring beer down its throat. Bit much. They look very tied poddy, don't they? Timothy uh, Kepke and Noah Osborne. They look like A-grade fucking tied podders. Remember the game where you search Florida man and then the date of your birth? Well, if you were born on the 26th of August, I've got a belter here. Uh, 27-year-old Timothy Kepke, uh, Kepke. And 22-year-old Noah Osborne reportedly filmed themselves during the incident, which occurred at the roadside in Palm City, Florida, on the aforementioned date. In the police report, Kippy told of how his mate grabbed the unsuspecting reptile in his bare hands after spotting it on the side of the highway. Uh, Kepi claims Ke- uh, Kepke claims uh, to have bitten to have been bitten on the arm by the animal before he tried to force feed it a can of beer. It's not clear whether he sustained any injuries from the bite or how large the alligator was. It's like about that big. It's a child. It's a minor. Both men were arrested on the 3rd of October. Once the cops became aware that the video existed, showing the pair during the incident. Can't stress this enough, guys. If you're going to commit a crime, and preferably don't, make sure you don't actually film yourself committing it. Um, it's really, really thick. Okay, thanks, Tom Woods. Um, perhaps, unfortunately for the rest of us, the video hasn't been released by the police. It also isn't clear whether or not the video circulated before the pair were actually brought in. Uh, they've both been charged with taking an alligator unlawfully. Uh, we should live in a world where <laughs> we shouldn't live in a world where that is an acceptable crime. Uh, also, is there a way to take an alligator lawfully? Uh, yeah, I imagine if it's in your front room. You can probably take it out of the front room legally. That's probably okay. Maybe that's removing it. I forget it. Just forget it. Complaint was received uh, by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission uh, back in August. New York Post uh, reported that authorities investigated were investigating uh, some other bollocks. Anyway, look, that's fine. That's done. Forget about it. Just forget about it. Okay. A bit slow off the mark today. Right, look, not all heroes wear capes. Yeah, the hero we need, not the hero we deserve. Martin Lewis of MoneySavingExpert.com. He calls for cinemas to provide actual start times for films. Fed up with getting there at 9 o'clock and the film not starting until 25 past. It is an outrage. And luckily, all (laughs) other problems in the world have been solved. Don't worry about Brexit. Don't worry about the possibility of a no deal. Don't worry about the whole Trump-Turkey situation. Don't worry about the thousands of ISIS fighters that might get released back into the wild uh, because of Donald Trump being a maniac. Don't worry about that. We have a much more important issue of film start times in cinemas. Yeah, don't worry about North Korea. Yeah. Okay, stop worrying about, about the rise of the far right. Stop worrying about Extinction Rebellion blocking the road. Cinema start times. We have to get this shit sorted. Um, oh, okay, so, all right, what's happened here? Is it just that he's just tweeted? Martin Lewis. Went to cinema yesterday. 8.45 showing, but it was 9.17 before the film actually started. I hope you didn't have your phone on in there, Martin, to check the time. Cinemas. We pay to see films. Fine. Show five to ten minutes of ads and uh, trailers, but this inflation of inflation to 33 minutes isn't on. Either cut pre-screening times or tell us the actual start times. Retweet if you agree. Well, a lot of people have by the looks of things. Um, yeah, it's good to get behind a cause, isn't it? It's good to get, to get behind something important. Uh, he says he has a tattoo on his forehead now that says, I don't do ads. That's cool. 
Uh, anyway, 55,000 retweets. That's not bad, is it? That is that's more retweets than I will see in a lifetime. I will tell you that. I will tell you that. Um, what did you go and see? I went to see Joker. Any good? Yes, but very disturbing. I'm not out that impressed by the attitude towards mental illness. Okay, thanks for the review, Martin Lewis of MoneySavingExpert.com. V disturbing, uh, from the trailers and even blah, blah, blah. As I wrote, I liked the film but found it disturbing. Not sure how I implied it was unexpectedly disturbing. I certainly did expect it. Okay, great. Cheers, Martin Lewis of MoneySavingExpert.com. Um, right, fuck Martin Lewis of MoneySavingExpert.com. I've had enough of that cunt. See you later, you smug prick. Uh, guys, look, it's the end of the show, okay? Um, please, please, please vote for DJ Gov in every single category on the Drum and Bass Arena Rewards, apart from, obviously, Best Video. And in that case, vote for John B. And for Best Newcomer, please vote for DJ Friction, as he is by far the best newcomer and has been for the last 25 years. Um, look... Uh, VIP list. Thank you to everyone who's supporting on Patreon. You're wonderful folks. Uh, there have been some requests to uh, set up a different donation system, which is this is a smart move um, because frankly I get run ragged by Patreon, PayPal and the currency conversion and tax stuff and it would be much better uh, to have it set up as a thing on the website rather than through a third party like patreon because literally like about 30 percent of it or something gets swallowed up which is ridiculous really like you know people are paying money to support the station and keep it going and a whole load of it is just disappearing off into the ether of silicon valley and that's not ideal because frankly i need it to pay the bills here uh, so i'm gonna set that up possibly later today and um, so if you're a patreon person or you want to get on or you don't like patreon there's some people that just won't don't want don't like patreon because of you know well yeah they've had they've because of action they've taken over the last couple of years and yeah fair enough so there'll be options there for those of you that aren't into uh, into patreon i would make sure that anything that went up on the patreon is available for anybody that supports on the other system so we'll get it set up on the website through the Shopify system that is there facilitating the merch. Um, so I could use, you know, to send out if there's like audio or video or whatever that comes in, like Jungle Ate My Hamster or whatever, could go up on that as well. So it's fine. Yeah, fingers crossed. Next couple of days, the new app will be up on stores for you to update. And fucking yeah, if you haven't, if you don't have the, even the original app, download it now so you can, you know, be ready to fucking update. The fucking second it makes it into the store. Ooh! Yeah, anyway, VIP list, guys. Um, people are supporting on the Patreon. Greg Cornford, Oliver Hooper, Tom Ryan, Reese Mosson, Swidgey Beats, Body Hutton, Kieran R, Michael Kaczynski, Matty Tompkins, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Sam Howard, Tony J, Richard Patson, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bullard, Jerome Van Thunderbuck, Mike Pye, Lily Unsub, Lily, Lily Pum Pum, um, Pilly Pum Pum, Poo 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 Poo, Richard Franks, Thomas Hall, Chode Ryder, John Finnison, BDR Crew, Peter Blatchard, Austin Grief Cooper, Gennady Lightfield, James Parry, Hannah Bartender, Ladies Griffin, to Lynn, the Man's Thunderbird, Dan Fucking Morris, Go, No ICDs, MSMC, Josh Williams, Rob Humphrey, Shibby T, Coco Shibby, Dan Nelson, Tom Wilmer, Mr. Pope, Double Crest, Sardin, Statue, Superior, Tom Bass, Chris Brakes, The Bill, Chris Bartholson, Odin Bates, Lee Fuller, D, Daniel Jemby, Flaxis, Matt Wright, Grant Sullivan, Tom Robinson, Dab Smasher, Connor Smythe, uh, Kevin Kaiser, Chris Shaw, uh, Ranking Makes Up, Lifting Vocal, Sidetrance Under the Alias, Cosmic Waff, Keep It Cool, Tall in the Motor Pool, But Don't Let You Meet Loaf, uh, Nick Brock, Sean Simpson, Robin Card, Hugh Dana, Sarah Hunt, The Hitch Muscle, El Tech, Willow, Ben Vogel, Dentui, Lubez, Alizar, Big Watch, My Hill, Mighty Danny, Nick Fleming, Carl Lewis, Gordon, and Liz, Kyle Williams, Tom Skipper, Unfortunately, it's George DC, Anthony Sharp, Claudio Lashmir, Benny Strem, Marche, Timid, John Forsyth, Anderson, Beers, and Godlight, MC Amadelli, your mum, Neil, Knowledge of Facing Big Eight! Guys, tune in on Threshold.fm now for Incidental Sonics with Constrict. And then at 3 o'clock, Rankings Records all up in your face. Uh, and then at 7, 7, Eastern Front with Mr. Merck, Dr. Tang, and Conflict. And then at 9, your boy, Duff, with all aboard. Thursdays, big as ever on Threshold.fm. The biggest days for the biggest boys with the biggest balls you've ever seen. Um, I'll be back at three. See you then. Um, you know, in the meantime, try and get on with some fucking work. Try not to take the Lord's name in vain. And um, be careful of that Johnson & Johnson medication, man. It'll make you grow a set. Okay. Um, I love you. Um, that's not right, is it? Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on. Okay. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.